Um, any special, you know, with these electric motors spinning so fast, any special lubrication requirements or just this standard keep heat out of the bearings and rotating elements and feed them with the appropriate amounts of, uh, of lube and you're okay? Is it? For the most part, I think for the most part, that's it. I think we have also, um, as we move to more active oil cooling, mm -hmm. the, where our background in transfer cases we were able to do a lot of splash lube systems. I, and I think we did have some examples where we also were, were pumping lube places, but a lot of times we could get away with a splash lube system. When you start to get into these more uh, mechanical pump driven, then you have a sump that you need to keep full and then you need to know how fast that oil is going to come back. And you're also trying to actively cool things so that the, it's got different thermal properties that are changing. We've really had to dial up our game on modeling very significantly okay. to make sure uh, we have the, the fluid dynamics, right? We're getting the cooling, the oil's where it should be. Gears are happy. Bearings are happy. Sump's full. Right. And, and that challenge, I think, is significantly more for us than it was a few years before. We haven't seen any OEM step forward yet and kind of consolidate the market around a new fuel. I think that, or excuse me, a new lubricant. That's something that we're very right. interested to see. And I think, uh, Eventually, we will see that in the same way that, uh, you know, deck six kind of became something that transmissions all of them had in it. We haven't really seen like a super efficient electrification fluid emerge yet as the, as the industry leader, but we're constantly watching that space for what's going to come next. And definitely we have our own favorites, but, you know, that's at the end of the day, a lot of that is really customer driven and, and we'll, we'll work with our customers to make the right choice. Okay. You know, the speeds are fast. The speeds are fast relative to things that automotive engineers are used to. You know, when you when you probably, if, I, I'm, I'm guessing if you talk to a guy that designs helicopter gearboxes, he'd laugh at that, you know. <laughs> so all these mechanical challenges are, are they're challenges. They're new. Um, they're new applications, but I don't know if there's anything completely new under the sun. And relative, it's all stuff that's, that's certainly... Can, can be addressed and is being addressed, right? Absolutely. I think, let me kind of riff on that because I think what um, we, we do see a lot of talk of like going to really, really high RPM. And we do a lot of work in top level system modeling, trying to take what is the customer going to want to see from us? What's that high level requirement? And then figure out, okay, uh, you plug that into your optimizer and let's say that you feed that optimizer with all the different parameters of, a, of an electric machine, all the different parameters of a gearbox, all the different parameters of an inverter. You allocate cost to each of those features and then you go run, you know, tens of thousands of virtual combinations of those things and it comes back with an answer. And the most cost effective answer that it wants you to build is a really tiny diameter motor with a super high gear ratio that spins 30, 40, 50,000 RPM, something crazy. I think when you really then look at the practicality of something like that, though, you start to say, okay, optimizer, I think maybe we didn't, you were under constrained here because you came back with an answer that wasn't super helpful for us. And, and a lot of that, I think, um, you know, uh, the efficiency and battery costs, the way that it's traded off, batteries are still relatively expensive. So it kind of makes you really want to um, pay whatever you need to pay for efficiency on the other side. But when we looked at some of those numbers sort of at the vehicle level, you find zero to 60 times of, you know, 10 seconds, 12 seconds. Like I used to drive uh, a Chevy Metro. I loved, <laughs> I loved that car. But if you were to tell me, hey, you need to go have a, a 12 seconds, zero to 60 time again, and you won't be able to shift gears. So it looks like you're feeling like you're helping. Right. Like, I, I don't know who's going to want that. So I think there's also a certain amount of when you look at the acceptance of EVs in the marketplace, that torque that you have available to you is a huge selling point. And so we can't forget about the overall customer experience and sort of let the optimizer tell us, oh, go do these other things. Um, I've been kind of uh, workshopping this, so you'll have to tell me if you like it. Um, I think in the old days, we always used to say there's no replacement for displacement. Right. And I think I'm trying to come up with a new catchphrase here. There's no parameter like diameter. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if that's going to catch on. This is pretty, pretty diameter, nerdy. More torque, lower speed. <laughs> Everybody wants to go the other way to downsize the system. Right, right. But, but there's negative trade-offs to that. And it's probably just less fun. 
that, to yeah, drive. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Well, I like it. I think you should stick with it. <laughs> All right. Thanks. I'll, I'll keep using <laughs> we'll, it. We'll look for the bumper sticker.